Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Pierce, and I'm the director of the Transnational Literature Series at Brookline Booksmith, just outside of Boston, Massachusetts, and your host for today's conversation. The Transnational Series focuses on stories of migration, the intersection of politics and literature, and works and translation. I just want to offer a quick Zoom webinar tutorial. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a few icons. One of those is a Q&A icon where you can enter in your questions at any time during the conversation. Another button will get you to the chat window. That space is there for you all. Please feel free to chat during the event. My colleague Ashley will be in the chat as well, dropping in useful information, including links to books by our authors. We do make every effort to keep these events free to attend in the hopes that you'll purchase the featured books from us. So thank you in advance for taking a look and supporting independent bookstores. And finally, you can see us, but we can't see you. So relax and please enjoy the conversation. Today, I have the great honor of introducing Farash Barakdar, Amiel Alkale, Shreya Talagani, and Elias Hori to discuss and celebrate the release of A Dove and Free Flight. Farash Barakdar is a journalist and award-winning poet. In 1987, he was arrested and remained in prison without trial until 1993, when he was sentenced to 15 years hard labor for belonging to an unauthorized political organization. His imprisonment lasted more than 12 years. Throughout his detention, he composed poetry that was smuggled out and without his knowledge, a group of friends in Beirut published A Dove and Free Flight. After an international campaign on his behalf, he was released from prison in 2000. In 2005, he left Syria and currently resides in Sweden. The Italian translation of A Dove and Free Flight won the 2017 Vercelli Festival Award and a second edition of the original Arabic was published in 2020. Poet, novelist, translator, critic, and scholar, Emil Elkaleh teaches at Queens College and the Graduate Center at CUNY. His books include After Jews and Arabs and Memories of Our Future, among many others. He has written and has been active in the Palestinian cause for decades, and during the wars in ex-Yugoslavia, he was one of the main conduits for translations from Bosnia. In 2017, he was given an American Book Award from the Before Columbus Foundation for his work as founder and general editor of Lost and Found, the CUNY Poetics Document Initiative. Sharia Telegani is Assistant Professor and Director of Middle East Studies at Queens College, City University of New York. She is the author of Readings in Syrian Prison Literature, The Poetics of Human Rights, and co-editor of Generations of Dissent, Intellectuals, Cultural Production, and the State in the Middle East and North Africa. And Elias Hori was born in Beirut, where he now lives. He is the author of 13 novels, four volumes of literary criticism, and three plays. A major international author whose importance and stature only grows, he has been Global Distinguished Professor of Middle Eastern and Arabic Studies at NYU and taught at Columbia University, the Lebanese University, the American University of Beirut, and the Lebanese American University. But he considers his greatest public honor to be the gesture made by a group of displaced Palestinians when they named a tent city erected in protest of Israeli settlements after his fictional village in the novel Gate of the Sun. I'm so thrilled to have them here together in conversation. And now Farage, Amiel, Shurea, and Elias. Are we all on? On. On, okay. Sharia, do you want to begin with uh, the, re uh, Faraj actually, we'll begin yeah. with the reading of Maying. You read one stanza in Arabic and Sharia one in English. And we'll yes. Sharia, oh. you know the poem consists of five. I will start the 
first part in Arabic and then you in English. And so on. Sahil. Tifa Wabkiya. ليس حزنا على جسة من بقايا إله بعيد إذا ليس حزنا على طائر مسقل بالفضاء ولا تأخذاني ولا تتركاني لعل خرابا بلا لغة كما ترجئان احتمالات ما قليلا فزنزانه جسدي والقصيده حريه طارئه Nay, stop and weep not sadness over the corpse of the remnants of a distant god and so not a sadness over a bird burdened with open space don't take me don't leave me Maybe my two friends, it's a wasteland without language. Maybe you both can postpone the probability of a death a little. For my prison cell is my body and the ode incidental freedom. Nafadat nakhlatun tal'aha wa hiya tujhishu. Man a'tarihi iza dalla haadi al-buruq. ومن يعتريني أيصعد تتبعه الأرض يهبط لا بد أن السماء التي يبتغي واطئة. A palm tree shakes off its pollen, breaking into tears. Whom have I struck if the lightning herder goes astray? And who has struck me? Is he rising? The earth follows. Is he falling? Overcome, surely he is higher than the sky below. قلت هذه رؤيا ونزفي يصدقها ليس للنهر أن ينثني دون هذا الرهان ولكنني عندما تهطل امرأة آخر الليل أنسى يدي على صوتها ثم تعزب تاركة لقيودي لأكتب شيئا أخيرا وهل من أخير سوى أنني كلما اجتهدت بطيور مؤجلة شرق الأفق واعتكرت ساعة من تراب من سراب تغرغرته أي هذان رد علي فضاء صغيرا فزنزانتي جسد أقتضيه وحرية ورد علي سؤالا لأجوبة بعثرتها القبائل أو بعثرتني عليها ولا ضير إن غدا فائضا سوف يجمعني دمعة دمعة كالقصيدة في مهدها ثم يومضني فجأة I said, this is my vision and my bleeding attests to it. The river doesn't bend except for this wager. But I, when a woman falls heavily at the end of night, I forget my hands on her voice and then she slips away, leaving me my chains to write something finally. But I, whenever within me the late birds struggle, the, horizons, the horizon chokes, or has the hour's mirage raised the dust I gargle? Of these two, give me back a little space, since my cell is a body I claim and a freedom that claims me. Give me back a question for the answers scattered by the tribes or that, or that scattered me over them. No harm in that. The coming day overflowing will gather me teardrop by teardrop, like an ode in its cradle, and then illuminate me suddenly, like a verse at its climax, and bless me with its antithesis. 
آه يا أخته يا أم يا أي عاشقة لو رأى الله صورته في عناقاتنا لتجلى ولكنه لا يرى غير أبوابها المقفلات وأغلالها والسماء مطأطئة تحت أحذية الجند غير سماء مضفرة عرشها من دم شرعها من أسيد أهي الروح تشهق من شجر في الدجال يرنحه الوصف والقصف ثم ترد شهيق دما في الرباط تلك مئذنة طعنة في الفراغ تلك سارية كعبها في التراب ولا تنتهي في السماء تلك جلجلة ودم يغسل النيل من مائه برد من كوابيسه والفرات O oh, sister, O oh, mother, O oh, any lover, if God saw his image in our embraces, it would be revealed. But he doesn't see, other than, other than locked doors and shackles, and the sky stretches under the soldier boots. Other than a braided sky, its throne is of blood, its law, acid. Does a spirit breathe in, in from the trees of Dujel? the description and the bombardment making them stagger until they send back what's been inhaled as blood in Rabat, that minaret, a stab in the void, that mast, its heel in dirt that doesn't end in the sky. This is Golgotha and blood washes the Nile of its water, Barada of its nightmares and the Euphrates. قلت هذه رؤايا وها أنتما جمرة جمرتين ثلاثا ويندلع الفجر زرقته لا تضل صهيلا صهيلا ويكتمل الشوط يعلن قسمة هذا الزمان كلنا ذاهبنا إلى ما سيأتي أجل كلهم ذاهبون إلى ما مضى والسدان حنان جراحي إذا وانهضى كتب الطفل بالبحر في رأس دفتره وقفا خطوة نزفا دمعة نهضا I said, this is my vision, and you both witness an ember, two embers, three, and dawn breaks. Its blue doesn't stray, neighing, neighing, running its course, making known the parting of this time. We're all heading towards what's to come. They've all passed on to what's gone. So cushion me in the tenderness of my wounds then and get up. The child writes in the C meter at the beginning of his notebook, and they stand only a step, shedding just a tear as they get up. Thank you, Faraj and Sharia, magnificent. Um, this is actually, even though we've been living with this book for 19 years, this is the first time I hear Faraj read. Uh, directly, uh, it's very thrilling uh, to hear this. That poem was written in 1992. So we have a huge span of time here in, in, in this whole project. And uh, as Elias said, when we were waiting to get in here, we were all a little bit younger at the time. Um, this project emerged, I just want to say very briefly, out of a class that Elias taught at NYU on Arab prison literature that I was sitting in on. And uh, we read a variety of texts, and then we encountered this book by Faraj, 
and it floored us completely. And I suggested to the class that we collectively translate it. So we did that work and Elias wrote an introduction and we began publishing uh, poems in various magazines, very different kinds of magazines to try to create an audience. And um, at a certain point we had a publisher in, prepared in 2004 or five. And then uh, there was an unfortunate uh, incident in which I was attacked by neocons. And the point of that attack was to defund places that I was involved in. And one of those was that publisher. So they couldn't, they couldn't, uh, that was beyond Baroque, the, the late Fred Dewey. And they couldn't do it. And so for the next uh, 14 years or so, I tried to find a publisher for this book uh, to no avail until thankfully my dear friends, Robert Boras and Zora Said at Upset Press decided to publish it. So we have this book. And um, I just want to ask Faraj before we turn to Elias, who can tell us a little bit about his impressions about everything that happened then. Faraj, how do you feel to see this book now in English after all this time? Yeah, as as if I found myself now, because this book when I was in prison, it came out uh, in Beirut. Many friends helped helped and uh, some publishing house, but this publishing house didn't mention its name on the. At least I couldn't find copies. So if I didn't publish this book, after uh, about 30 years, I could publish it in Arabic. This is, so I feel that this is the first uh, edition in Arabic. Mm. But when I see it in English and I know in advance that uh, you, Sharia, um, uh, and all the others after the uh, uh, course which uh, our friend Lias made it in uh, New York University, I had some ideas, but later I said, mm, it's okay. It was translated, but nobody could find some publisher, but it's okay because I read it in English, Sharia and you sent me the manuscript and some poems were published in uh, Words Without Borders or like that. So I was convinced it's okay, but to get it completely published in English edition, it is uh, more than what I uh, can uh, dream. <laughs> because mm. my dreams really are a very little or a very, uh, not so much, but this is so much for me. So I feel that I found my, myself every time when I read or when I get some book published, I feel that I found myself or part of myself. But now, really, because this book, uh, I'm proud of it especially, even if I wrote better than it in, in, as a poetry. But because I wrote it I, and I could smuggle it, the first book I could smuggle it on cigarette paper. I remember well the suffering, how, how to even the fear of the, because if they catch the thing which I put the cigarette paper in, it is big uh, adventure, but, uh, and it, uh, I was very afraid when I heard that it uh, was, uh, came out in Beirut, because I thought they would cut my visiting, my family, and they will send me back to Palmyra prisons. But uh, later, I uh, knew that it play a big role to release me. Of course, I know 
I know that uh, many, many uh, things participated to release me, but this book was the gate to, to be in French, to be to some friends to make some international campaign, etc. But now I feel that uh, now I could see everything or I could catch my dream, but I am comfortable completely, not before. Before I could catch some dreams, but not uh, comfortably. Thank you, Faraj. I'm going to read one poem and then turn it to Elias. Story. Once upon a time, Epoch, son of time, told me that fire is a guide. So make sure you've got enough for a long and rugged ride. Attempt night anyway, and if despair knocks the door upon you, no matter, rise up and write on the walls without explication or detail. Oh, master despair, tell your lord, the sultan, that the cell is no narrower than his grave that the cell is no shorter than his life. This, if the earth accepts his corpse, enclosed by footsteps and protected by forgetfulness. Elias, maybe you can tell wow, us. Wow, wow, wow. Beautiful, I mean, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, actually, actually, um, I, have, I have a lot to say, but I don't know how to put it. <laughs> uh, 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 because, because you know, uh, it's a melange of uh, it's a mixture of uh, emotions and and remembering. Uh, uh, Twenty years ago, we are we are wow, time time. Uh, it shows us that that uh, that poetry and literature can overcome time, and in this sense. Poetry can overcome us, can overcome the poet himself, and can overcome the translator, and can overcome the critique. It is uh, poetry is timeless in the sense that it takes us to the deep, deep parts of the human soul, which nothing else can take us uh, the same way as poetry do. Uh, this book actually was an outcome of love, to tell you the truth. Uh, for me, uh, I was, I was uh, teaching uh, this seminar with a group, uh, with a small group of students at NYU, and we were working, uh, and I was, for me, I was working on the uh, prison literature in modern Arabic, in modern Arabic literature, and I was astonished to find out that uh, uh, prison literature became a dominant form in Arabic, not because we Arabs love prisons, but because we are in prisons. We are imprisoned by this, uh, uh, by dictatorships all over the Arab world. And that this experience uh, 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 was more than a political experience because it opened the gates of new approaches, of new literary approaches, of a new literature, I remember that if one can speak about a new way, the new wave of the Arabic novel, we have to go back to Sun Allah Ibrahim's uh, uh, The Smell of It, uh, which is a novel, a novella uh, written about the experience of prison. And, and the impact on this novella was not uh, uh, only a political impact it was a literary impact because it played a major role in the change of the perspective of the ways of writing in in modern arabic uh, literature so uh, uh, we were working on this literature and i was totally overwhelmed by what i was reading you know you know that professors actually uh, uh, learn more than they teach uh, for me, it was it was a way to to read, uh, to understand things, and to rethink things, and to discover things. And I discovered that we uh, uh, in the Arab world we were living actually in a, in, a, in, a, in a big prison. It's it's a nightmare. 
when we read the poetry, uh, the prison poetry or the novel poetry, we discover how nightmarish is our life. And, and in this nightmare, you cannot but feel empathy, more than empathy, feel identification and love to those who are enduring what they are enduring, especially uh, uh, after, uh, after the testimonies that came out from Tadmur, from Palmyra prison. Uh, the first one was Faraj one, which, uh, which I actually uh, published. I was at that time the editor or the editor in chief of a literary supplement of uh, the Lebanese newspaper and Nahar. And I published the first uh, one chapter from that book. And publishing it was an act of, of intense, of great courage, because everybody in the newspaper was so afraid uh, that I will pay my life for this chapter that was written, not by me, but by, by, by a Syrian poet who is uh, in, in, in jail. So you cannot do that if you do not love what you are doing. So it's an act of love, and 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 uh, as as far as I remember, when I came to the class, and I was I was working on the technically on the on the on the on the, on the theoretical approach about prison, you know all this uh, you know all this uh, uh, jargon, blah blah, which uh, we uh, academics do normally. Uh, uh, then. When we finished uh, the, the, uh, the theory and we came to the real text, uh, 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 I felt that this class was, was all, all of the students uh, 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 were inside, we were all inside the boat, which was taking us uh, uh, to, a new, to a new place to discover not only the writers who wrote these books or these texts, not only the circumstances they were living, but also to discover ourselves. Uh, now, now the class was, uh, for me, was a fascinating experience. Uh, I had, I had uh, fortunately, a, a group of, uh, of excellent students. Practically, they were not students, they were colleagues. Uh, and and we worked as colleagues. We didn't work as professor and student. We worked as colleagues. And when uh, I remember, Sharia was the first one who, who translated a poet uh, a poem from Faraj. And then the idea of continue to continue the translating affair. And at that moment, uh, it was the idea of Amir to put uh, to translate the whole book. And everybody was so enthusiastic because they felt that they were not doing a literary work, but they were doing a, a, a political action. It was a political action. It was a, 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 a humanist, profoundly. A, a, their feeling of this uh, human solidarity, which Unfortunately, in this terrible times of, uh, of, of a new, uh, new cons and post-capitalism, it is, it, is it is nearly destroyed. Uh, people were feeling that uh, while we are translating these, this work, I mean the work of Farah, they were, they were sending a message, uh, not only to the poet himself, but also to the readers, which we have to wait 20 years to, to, to find them. But anyway, we found them in the end. And that's the most important thing. And we found them, and now it's their turn to find themselves, to find, to find what this kind of profound poetry that Faraj Roche has implications on them. Uh, uh, so, reading these poems now, actually, I, 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 yesterday when I was uh, 
preparing myself for this uh, for this uh, debate, I reread the book. Uh, reading this book will not take us to to the past. It will take us to the present, and it will, it will take us to the future. Read this book to discover the present of our world. It's a terrible world to discover the situation in the in the Arab world. When Faraj wrote this book, Tadvor was a prison with, I don't know how many, but thousands, let's say, of, of prisoners. Now Syria is a prison with millions of prisoners. And, and, and when, when, when we published the book, when the book was published, Smargil to Beirut, and it was published in Beirut, it was one voice of, uh, of, let's say, of uh, literature going to exile. Now, I think that more than 50% of the modern Arabic literature is in exile. We are all in exile. Unfortunately, this is what, what's taking place. And this is what gives this book and the other uh, experiences of, of the prison literature their profound, their profound meaning, and 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 their their ability to speak to us now. So I, I want to thank all these beautiful students, with uh, Amiel, who made this uh, book possible in English, and I want to tell Faraj that. Although he has written very beautiful poems, we are still waiting more. Because as I said, poetry goes beyond all of us. And thank you. Color. <laughs> your mic, uh, Amiel, your mic's off. Unmute, sorry. Thank you, Elias, that was perfect. Um, I'm going to read one more poem and then turn it over to Sharia who will ask Faraj a few questions. Vision. I imagine myself weak. My friend Malik bin al raib greeted me and gave me sanctuary. I was neither alive nor dead, so I made room for him. Oh, how the tightness of the space shamed me. I was destroyed. Born on the final wound or stone, I was cloaked in my blood and my love. I said, would you allow me a verse in your one elegy, Malik? For death is a coward and I am sorrow to a sorrow and within me is what makes death lonely, even with the dead. So he said, I remember those who are mourning you. And I was told other than us, there are many and the clouds are few. And if you and the banners are a tinted horizon, the sun veers toward it and it leans. Truly she speaks softly to you, a river or a star or an eagle, its broken wings, both a vision and ruin. For you, all people are distress and determination and everything impossible except you is transformed. The struggle between you and fate is as strong as the horse's neighing and promised embrace. Palestine Division, April 1987. Sorry, please. So, um, Faraj, I wanted to, to ask you maybe to talk a little bit about, um, you know, many of these poems you, you composed while you were detained um, in various prisons, um, some of them 30 years ago, <laughs> many, many years ago, many decades ago. So. When you look back on these poems, how do you how do you how do you look back on these poems, and and how do you compare them to your mo more recent poetry? The the more recent poetry you composed. I'm not sure if I could catch exactly what uh, you mean. So uh, may I ask you to to uh, make it yeah. in shortly in Arabic? Okay, go ahead. No, Ilias, go ahead. You'll translate better. So, I'll say, no, I don't know, and Catawal decision, uh, uh, Menzame, Mitletisim, 
تقريبا هل انت كيف كيف تنظر الى هذه القصائد الان على ضوء تجربتك وكتاباتك الشعريه اليوم Okay. Uh, Faraj, you can speak in Arabic and I will translate it, no problem. That's good. I It's think this you, yeah. you question, can, can this question is, is difficult, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> difficult to me to <laughs> express myself in Arabic because it is... Okay, thank you, thank you. No, no, go, 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 go to Arabic, Faraj. Yalla. Okay, okay. Anna, when I started الكتابة بالسجن الحقيقة بدأتها بعد توقف مدة التخفي أربع سنين أنا ما كتبت شعر. When I, when I began writing poetry in prison, I began it after four years of uh, of silence uh, because during all the time of uh, of being hidden before they captured me, I did not write poetry. في السنوات الأولى شعرت أنني أعيش حياة مختلفة تماماً عن الحياة في الخارج حياة أقرب إلى أجدادي قبل ألفين سنة. In the first in the first year, I felt that I'm living an experience which is very different from the experience of my life outside the prison. It's a life which is very near, which makes me near, which makes me uh, uh, very near. to the life of my, of my ancestors 2,000 years ago. كل البيئة المحيطة فيي حقيقة هي رمال صحراء هي أصوات عواء كلاب أو ذئاب هي معارك وخيول ودم وخيل عم يعني تحمحم هاي الاجواء اللي انا كنت عايش فيها فعليا all all that was surrounding me was the sand because I was in a prison in, in, in the desert was the barking of dogs and wolves and was uh, uh, the voices of horses الفرق الوحيد انه اجدادنا الشعراء القدماء كانوا يبداوا قصائدهم بالتوقف عند الاطلال اطلال الاحباب والاهل نحن لم يكن لدينا اطلال او اثار كانت اطلالنا اجساد The difference the difference is that our our ancestors our ancestors poets used to begin their poems by standing before the ruins. Uh, uh, but we, uh, in the situation we were, we didn't have ruins. Our bodies were our ruins. Aywa. لغة القصائد أيضا لغة قديمة كأنها مكتوبة قبل ألف عام. The language of the poem is, is an old one, as if it was written 1,000 years ago. Because the circumstances and situations and our situation resembles the situation 1,000 years ago. فقط هذه المجموعة الشعرية كانت هكذا ولكن لاحقا أنا كتبت سبع كتب بلغة أخرى أخرى مختلفة وعن عن أمور مختلفة ولكن هذه تماما كما لو أني عدت إلى العصر الجاهلي. Only this collection of poetry was written with this language. Afterwards, I wrote seven uh, seven collection of poetry with a different language with different approaches. Only this collection of poetry. Uh, 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 was written with the impression as if that I had went that I had went back to the pre-Islamic uh, epoch. كان الزمن الذي عشت فيه تلك السنوات يعني هو مأساة بكل معنى الكلمة. 
ولكنه الآن يعاد لكن بصورة أكثر مأساوية The time I lived there in this experience was tragic but unfortunately now this tragedy is repeating itself but in a more tragic way يعني لتبسيط الأمر أستطيع أن أقول كان كل ميت سجين سياسي يعني ممكن تحت التعذيب ينقتل واحد الآن بعد الثورة كل ميت سجين يمكن أن يقتل تسعة وتسعين If you have 100 uh, political prisoners, uh, you can suspect that one of them uh, uh, could die under, under torture. Nowadays, if we have 100 prisoners, then about 99%, 99 of them will be killed under torture. أتمنى... أن لا أتذكر هذه الأمور ولكن الظروف حتى الآن تجعلني أشعر أن القصائد يمكن أن أكتبها مجددا لم يتغير شيء إلا زيادة سوء. Uh, can can take me once again to write poems like this with this language because here we are now. Hey, Sharia. Um, thank you, thank you for the response and the translation. Um, I want to just um, pause a minute to to read a poem. Um, that I've been teaching or, or actually learning from my students um, for the past seven years, and they always have a lot to say about it, and it's called cooing. Your cooing wears me out at night, so wear me out like wine in the odes. You go on cooing and leaves me what moves horses to tears, what weighs birds down with more wings, what singing follows. Your coo is a cradle kept from rocking, cornered by absence. Is the tree of the heart enough if our wind was shattered and we too were shattered with the wind? Is the tree of the heart made of our blood or mirage? A question seduces me, shooting star by shooting star, a flower, a flower or two, numb upon my arm as dawn steals blue to bathe the dew, so I see it. And for this question, the gazelle and what binds us in the nets of the answer, and so the sky won't be confined, I'll release a flock of stray doves and open the towers of my spirit for the day to come. So if your cooing drowns me, let me drown. And if you wake me up, I'll leave a crack of dream open and sleep. Um, so. I wanted to uh, also ask you, Farosh, we, we see, I, I remember when we first read this collection in class and I could see all of the influence of the Jahli poets, the pre-Islamic poets uh, in, in some of the poems, including the, the first, um, including in the first poem we read together for this event, Nain especially, that, that really evokes the, the Jahli poems. Um, In addition to sort of that inspiration, that inspiration of the pre-Islamic poets of sort of using those th that vocabulary in that language um, to talk about the very sort of tragic situation um, in Syrian prisons through your poetry, what other more modern inspiration, uh, more modern poets uh, influenced or inspired your poetry? واضح فراش ولا لا لا والله خلص انا اعتمدت عليك 
اوكي تنختصر بعد ما قريت القصيده بتقول انه واضح واضح بهالقصيده اثر الشعر الجاهلي عليك خصوصا القصيدة الأولى اللي قريناها اليوم وهيدا طبعا ناتج عن ظروف السجن مثل اللي انت شرحت هلا بس سؤال هلا هو مين غير الشعراء الجاهليين مين مين يعني مين مؤثر مين في مؤثرات شعرية عليك غير هذا الشعر العربي القديم هلا الحقيقة الشعراء كثر عرب وغير عرب وحتى روائيين يعني قد تكون مفارقة انه روائيين اثروا بلغتي الشعرية اوكي اي واز اي واز اي واز انسبايرد باي ماني ماني بويتس اربس اند نون اربس اند ايفن باي نوفلست It's a paradox uh, to tell you that, uh, that the language of, of the novel uh, uh, influenced my political language. ولكن نعم أبرز أبرز الشعراء اللي أثروا بعمق بتجربتي الشعرية فيني قول المتنبي والمعري معا أو الشاعر اللي بيطلع So, if I want to speak about the poets who influenced me, I can begin with Al Mutanabi, Abu Tayyib Al Mutanabi, and Abu Al Alla Al Ma'arri. As you know, both are 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 Abbasid, the third Abbasid poets. Or actually, the outcome if we mix together. المتنبي عند ابو العلاء ومن الشعراء الحديثين وبعضهم معاصرين نزار قباني بدر شاكر السياب شعر الوطن المحتل الشعر الفلسطيني and from modern poets i can speak about uh, the influence of uh, the syrian نزار قباني the iraqi Badr Shakir Sayyab and the poetry of uh, the Palestinian modern poetry. وأخيرا نعم. هناك شعراء شباب أشعر أن لهم تأثير مهم على ذائقة الشعرية على محاولة تطوير تجربة الشعرية وأدوات الشعرية يعني أنا أشعر أنني أستطيع أن أتعلم حتى من الشباب وليس من القامات الكبيرة فقط. And even uh, when I read young uh, young poets, I have the feeling that that they can influence my uh, my poetry or my poetical approach. I can not only learn from uh, great poets but also from the young uh, uh, young from the these young poets yes نعم خلاص بعد هذا okay great thank you so i'm going to read one more poem and then i think we'll, unless amiel if you have any more questions you want to uh, go ahead sure i think then we'll break for questions when okay. uh, yeah So this poem is called A Visit. Finally, unlike what hadn't been usual for him, my darling smiled at her name. The universe celebrated by adding two extra skies and butterflies wore wings of pure freedom. Thanks, said the forests as they combed their hair with the wind. Thanks, said the seagulls as they shook the fatigue of the first migrations off their wings. Thanks, said the waves, as they performed their dance on an oceanic altar of passion. Wheat fields stirred, and dreams tamed the storms, and God retook his throne again. Finally, and like what had been usual till then, the guard's voice gurgled, making known the end of the visit. The prison grill closed, closed, closed her eyes, 
and the walls don a hue of deep shame. Thank you, Sherry. I'm, I'm gonna read one very Beautiful. short, the last poem in the book, and then we'll go to questions. Revolution. Before my imprisonment, whenever we stayed up late, I would say, this is the night of my life. And now, whenever I stay up, I say, this is a lifetime of nights. Oh God, even the S of the plural. Wow. Wow, excellent. Wow, indeed. Um, you know, you've done something special and Elias is speechless. And just has wow. Thank you, everyone. This has been just a just a once in a lifetime conversation to witness. I said in the in the green room before we started, this felt like a reunion, and it, it does, and it's still even with the audience here, it's very special. Um, we have a question. I'm sure we'll have more come in, but let's start with this one. After you immigrated to Europe and then looked at the poems you had written in prison, did you see the poems differently? Did that affect the way you revised them? Would someone like to translate if necessary? The question. Uh, can you can you repeat the question, please? I didn't get it. Yes, and you you can see it too um, if you go down to the Q and A button if that's easier to. After you immigrated to Europe and then looked at the poems you had written in prison, did you see the poems differently? Did that affect the way you revised them? Okay, when I was in Europe, I went to Europe and I read these words. Did you read them in a different way? How did you read them? How did you read them? للأسف أني قرأتهم مثل ما كتبتهم أو مثل ما كنت أقرأهم وأنا عم مكتبهم ولكن مع فارق أنه هي مشاعري أنا عم أقرأها أمام آخرين وبظروف هي عكس ذلك ولكن قلت التجربة يجب أن تصل حتى لو كانت الظروف مريحة والناس مرتاحين وأنا مرتاح أثناء القراءة أقرأ كأني أقرأ ذاكرتي وليس حاضري. When I read when I read these these poems before the audience after after I was released and went to Europe, uh, I used to read as if I'm reading my memory and not my present. This is how I lived. This is how I wrote, and and this is the memory of of the time uh, the time I spent in prison. So this is how I read them. Yes. I I've got more questions coming in, I'm sure. But in the meantime, I'd love to hear a little bit more about the revising and also about the meeting. Shurea and, and Faraj in 2005. What was, what was that revision and what was the, the meeting like? Um, I don't know, should I answer first or? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I had the chance, I was in Beirut and Damascus to do research in 2005 and I had the chance to visit you Faraj, I'm sure you remember in Holmes um, be, before you left uh, for the Netherlands. Um, and so we sort of discovered in that conversation in the process that the, the original publication in Arabic um, had, had a lot of issues. It had a lot of error, errors because uh, Faraj couldn't, wasn't involved in the final editing and some of the poems weren't in their final version. So we had to rework the translations from the corrected manuscript. Um, and it was really, a, I, I look back now, especially because it's not likely I'll go to Syria anytime soon. Um, I'm really grateful that I had the chance to um, uh, visit you and also to meet your daughter. 
um, and to actually go over the poems face to face, because I think there's really nothing like being in conversation with the poet or author you're translating from to really understand, especially with poetry, to really understand um, what the meaning is, um, because some, sometimes that can be really elusive. Yeah. فرج عندك شيء تضيفه؟ سمعت السؤال ما هي؟ ولا بترجمه؟ السؤال موجه الي ولا الشريعه ولا للشريعه؟ الك ولا الشريعه انه وقت التقيته خلال عمليه تحرير الكتاب هي التقيت فيك سنه 2005 اجت على حمص وشفتها وهلا هي خبرت انه عملت مقارنه مع ال... مع الشعر مع شعرك واكتشفت انه في اغلاط بالطبعه لانه انت ما اشرفت عليها وقديش هي انبسطت وارتاحت وقديش مهم من المترجم يلتقي بالكاتب اللي او بالشاعر اللي عم يترجمه انت عندك شيء تضيفه على هذا الكلام؟ لا انا عندي رغبه اشكر كل من عمل على ترجمه هذا الكتاب بالانجليزي او بلغات اخرى لانه مغامره ليست سهله ترجمه هذه اللغه Uh, uh, all that I have to say is to thank uh, everybody who worked in the translation of this book to English or to any other language, because I know how that translating this book is uh, is a real, a real adventure because of its uh, of its language itself. Now. I just want to. We had it in the chat, but I just want to mention at this moment. Uh, the other translators, Sinan Antoun, Rebecca Johnson, Celine Nalbantian, and Jeff, Jeff Sachs. Sorry, Faraj, if you wanted to continue. No, no, no. Okay. No problem. I think that if I did not meet with the law, or if I did not travel to the law, there was a book that was written ترجمة مليئة بالنواقص لأن أصدقائي حين نشروا الكتاب كلمات كثيرة على ورق السجاير لم تكن واضحة فوضعوا نقاط في أول طبعا أو تركوا في قصائد مثلا ما واضح العنوان تركوها بدون عنوان يعني في تفاصيل كثيرة ولكن حقيقة لقاء بشريعة لعدد من الأيام أصبحت على مطمئن تماما إلى أن الترجمة هي على أفضل نحو ممكن. سيس فراج ذات meeting with شريعة and revising the text. was very important because the text as it, it was published in Beirut was uh, was filled of, uh, let's say, not errors and things which are incomplete because my friends uh, who, who took the book from the cigarette papers, there are many, many words they couldn't read. Uh, and so, uh, or, or they didn't find. And uh, uh, so there are many things which they left with three points or uh, or uh, or titles of poems which uh, stayed uh, which stayed uh, empty so uh, i think that my meeting with her uh, uh, made it possible to have a, a, the best of one of a translation of of my book okay Uh, I want. I want actually to add one. If, if you, you, after your permission, all of you, I want to add one one major idea. And I think, I think uh, 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 this class, which uh, uh, of course now now uh, from this class we have scholars, Jeff and Sharia. We have. Uh, scholars and poets and writers like Sinan, 
uh, 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 they are all now grown up. يعني <laughs> they were uh, they were in their uh, early late twenties or early thirties when we worked together. Uh, uh, that uh, that it was a real adventure to decide to translate this book. As as Faraj said, it's a difficult book. And and for us and for them actually for the class in general, but for them because they took the job, they did the job. Uh, uh, I was my my only role was to be the initiator of the whole thing, uh, not more. Uh, uh, the, 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 taking this job was a great a great action of 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 love towards poetry, and 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 of. Total commitment to the to the idea of freedom, and and, and, and as you see now, you know, twenty years later, uh, when we have this book in, in our hands, uh, we have the feeling. I had the feeling that I have, if not freedom itself, I have bits of freedom because we are seeking for freedom. In Syria, in Lebanon, in Palestine, in Egypt, and today in Sudan, if you are if you are following the uh, what's going on now in Sudan with the demonstrations all over against the the coup, the military coup, uh, uh, we are we we are as if we are uh, 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 scratching bits of freedom, because this is our only way to feel that we are still human beings. And in this sense, this book was very important for of all of us. And Faraj himself, I remember, after he was uh, he was released from prison, I invited him to Beirut. To I was at that time also the director of uh, of a theater in Beirut, theater called the Theater of Beirut, and I invited him for a poetry reading. And for me, I don't know for him how how he felt. But for me, this poetry reading was was an expression of my profound commitment to the cause of freedom in Syria. And still, still, Faraj and myself, and I'm sure all of you, are are committed to this idea of freedom in Syria and everywhere. What the Faraj Shulat? Yes, and I would like to add a small thing. When I was released, it was clear to me that I am forbidden to, to read any poem everywhere. Forbidden totally. So the first time I could read my poems was in Beirut. And the authorities accepted to me, give me uh, permission to travel to Beirut. I thought they will not uh, give me that. But uh, Elias invited me and he prepared a lot. I know well how, how, how he did to, to, to make uh, these readings uh, perfect. But to me, I felt at that time that when you are as a prisoner, when you go out, that doesn't mean that you are free at all. Your body is free, just your body. But at that time, I felt, oh, now really, I am free. This is the main meaning of freedom. To see the people, to meet them, to discuss with them, to read as you want to. So... I think um, my freedom started at that time. <laughs> and later, you know that uh, Elias uh, helped me a lot in the theater, in Lebanon in general. He tried to help me to publish one book about my experience in prison, not poetry. It is like diary. But unfortunately, uh, the publisher were uh, afraid. But uh, I feel that, oh, I have a lot of friends in the world. I have a lot of, some of them, I was happy that I met them. Some of them, I heard about them, or I know their names, but I know also a lot of uh, friends 
unfortunately until now I didn't meet or I didn't treat them. But I feel Elias uh, like Bishara, Bishara to me, not profit, another thing, Bishara for all the life. When Elias support some matter, support some people, some person, so you can see, okay, everything will be perfect. Many thanks, Elias, many thanks for all of you. Amel, I am in contact long time. Shari, I could meet here and I would like to have all of you here in my home in Stockholm. Really, I feel now, okay, I don't need poetry. I don't, I am happy just to be free now with you. Beautiful. Habibi. Yeah. Shukran, Iktir, Yani. Uh, I want to just add one thing that in the book, Shari translated a most extraordinary document, which is a long interview with Faraj conducted by Muhammad Ali al -Latassi. And uh, it is one of the most extraordinary documents that I am aware of about the meaning of poetry under the most extreme circumstances. And uh, the questions are extraordinary and Faraj's answers are even more extraordinary. So it's a very important text. Um, and I also just want to mention Abdel Latif Labi, a friend of ours who translated the book into French originally after it came out in Arabic. And that was a very important thing. So this circle is very wide of friends and people who are uh, finding, as Elias said, these bits of freedom. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Everyone who's joined us tonight, this is so special. I just want to quickly say at the end that we do have books in, in stock here at the bookstore. Um, it really is just released and we did a rush order. So we might be one of the first indie bookstores in the country to have books. So please come purchase from us. We would love to support this work, this press, and it would be an honor to have you buy the book from us. Thank you all. Shukran. Shukran al jamia al shukr. Shukran Faraj, Habib Albi. Habib Albi. Shukran Amir. Shukran Sharia. You have done a great work. Uh, 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 I am I am personally indebted to you forever. Thank you. Same goes. <laughs> same, same, same. Same. Thank you, Pierce. Thanks for having us. Of course. I am waiting all of you. Here, here, here. We're <laughs> meeting face to face We're again. Coming. We're That's coming. Good. Get ready. We're coming. Yalla. Yalla, yalla. 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 Goodbye, all. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. Nice salami. Bye.